Welcome to another episode of the Baseball Awakening Podcast, where we dive into the raw, unfiltered, unsexy side of player development. Get ready for some knowledge bombs with your host, Jeff Rottmeyer. Welcome to the Baseball Awakening Podcast. I'm Jeff Rottmeyer. Today we're sitting down with Dave Kirillov of languageofhitting.com. And Dave, you're here. We're going to talk them hitting. How are you, sir? Wonderful, Jeff. Thank you for having me on your show. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming on. You know what, Dave? Um, I've been uh, kind of a follower of yours for some time, so I appreciate you having you on and, and kind of listening and learning from you. So uh, let's just kind of start, you know, for our listeners, you know, a little bit about, you know, your background and, and kind of what, you, what you're doing now with uh, the language of hitting.com. Okay, well... You know, first of all, first and foremost, I'd like to tell people that I am an ambassador for Jesus Christ, secretly disguised as a hitting coach. So that's my primary objective, Jeff. And uh, so I, I, I praise the Lord for everything I'm doing, all the information we're going to talk about today. And then uh, I have a, a beautiful wife and married to for 23 years, and we're in the process of uh, relocating ourselves to uh, near Dallas, Texas. And uh, before this, we uh, lived in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, and that's where my, we raised a uh, daughter, Sophia, and we raised our son, Alex. Uh, Sophia was an ice skater for a lot of years, and now she's, uh, she's married. Uh, she left the home when she was got married. She was, she was 19, and she lives now in Colorado. And my son is a professional baseball player in a Twins organization. He left the house at 18, got married at 18. Big year for him was 2016. And, uh, like, again, he's currently with the, um, the uh, Minnesota Twins organization. Very cool. So, uh, great athlete, great family. Um, I appreciate you sharing all that. Um, okay. So, let's, uh, let's talk, let's talk some hitting. Let's, uh, you're, you're, you have a website called languageofhitting.com and, uh, you're kind of, you're constantly evolving. Um, but I'd like to kind of, just curious of how you got started in all this and then, you know, how you've evolved over the years. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, um, I guess shortly after, uh, my playing career, I had, a I had an incident where I was, a, I, I feel like just like everybody else was, I was a good baseball player. Right. Right. But it was, it was difficult getting exposure in Western Pennsylvania back in the eighties for someone to consider you and in, in serious. And I was in the draft on the draft board, but my, my junior year in college, I had suffered a really bad accident. I was doing batting practice with another player, and uh, I didn't get behind the L screen, and I got hit with a baseball, and uh, it, it gave me a blood clot in my arm. And basically, the blood clot shut everything down. And so uh, I got a degree in teaching, and uh, so I did that. And then when I was teaching, uh, trying to get a teaching job, I I, I was, was blessed enough to still be able to throw a baseball after about, you know, a year. Uh, and I got into instruction, doing instruction, and I started coaching at an area college named Point Park College uh, in western Pennsylvania and doing lessons. And uh, so and I was, I was, when I was doing lessons, I was very blessed to, to meet a man named Frank Porco. And Frank Porco at the time, in the early, I guess early 90s, was a uh, a uh, I guess a, a pioneer, or, or not a pioneer, but he was an advanced hitting coach that really paid attention to swing mechanics. And one of his prized pupils that he was working with is someone named Sean Casey. And Sean Casey uh, was from West Pennsylvania and just swore by Frank's system, and I swore by Frank's system. And it was a lot of mechanics and um, you know body parts moving together. You know, the sequential locking of body parts to organize the bat speed at the point of contact taken from Gary Ward. You know, the whole nine yards. And, and Rob Ellis, of the hitting videos, uh, we just talked about getting every, every piece of information we can to learn. So Frank guided me along the path of Gary Ward and Rob Ellis and other people in, in, in a time. And, um, and uh, it was very good. He taught me a lot about mechanics. And then eventually I, I left and I, I, just, I got him on my own two feet and, Start doing um, my own uh, baseball academy. Very cool. So, what uh, 
you know, when it comes to the the swing, what what did what is what did your belief? Uh, there, I mean, you can, you can go on the internet and find a, a bunch of different things, and, and I'm very careful about saying that anything is wrong, uh, because there's some things that work for different people, but there's a lot of things, a lot of questionable things. But what what is your thought on on the swing side of things? Well, let me, well, let me go back to Frank Porco. Frank Porco was probably, probably in my opinion, the most astute. Uh, hitting coach I've ever been around. I mean, the people that he led me to, uh, those professional gentlemen, they were very good. But I think Frank was better because he analyzed and dissect things to meticulous uh, points of view. And what he would mesh into his perspective was a golfing perspective. You know what I mean? So a lot of things that Sean Casey grew up with and I watched and observed and, and, and as Frank mentored me was a lot of golf swing ideas and mechanics. And um, so when I got my own place, uh, that's what I did. I did that for, you know, 12, 15, about 12 years. I just got stuck on swing mechanics. And here's where it changed for me, Jeff. All right. So, I'm co- you know, I was blessed to have an academy, but then I had travel teams. So I had players taking batting lessons with us and pitching lessons with us. And then I would go out and coach them in games. So I saw the product on the field, what was being you know, manufactured in the laboratory. And I said, too many times, I was like, you know what? This isn't working. I mean, they're doing exactly what I'm training them to do in the laboratory. But when we get to the game, something isn't jiving. I mean, everybody wasn't like that, right? Sure. And the, you know what's, what's kind of funny was the, the, the players, <laughs> I would show them to do something. I had it down in the batting cages. When they get to the game, they wouldn't do it at all. They, they did what, what came natural. Like, well, you didn't do what I asked you to do, but... You're still hitting, so you're trying to compile this information together, and then you start learning, and you just, so you just sort of study and analyze, and so well, why is he hitting? What's he doing that the other guy isn't doing? But he's doing things differently. So that's where one day I was coaching a, um, a select collegiate league level team, wood bat summer team, right? And uh, my players were good. And uh, we had a wonderful BP before the game. I mean, all my guys were hitting airplanes, left center field, right center field, and center field. And I feel like, oh, my gosh, we're going to have a great game. You know what I mean? And we show up. And you know what? No. No. They, they were hitting pop-ups, ground balls, and they're striking out. And I'm standing, I'm standing at, at, at third base coaching, and I'm observing. I go back to the dugout, and I watch the other team bat. I'm thinking, you know what? The other teams are doing much better than my team. I said, what am I missing? I go back out and I start praying. And I, I, I had an epiphany. I had an, 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 a light go off in my mind. It was like the Holy Spirit was talking to me and said, Dave, what is the pitcher trying to do to your batter? I said, get the batter out. And then I heard, well, what's he doing to get your batter out? He's, he's trying to mess up his timing. He throws it fast and throws one slow. What else does he do? Okay. He throws the, he tries to mess up the batter's space. He throws it high. He throws it low inside and outside. And I thought about it. And so that's the pitcher's two weapons to mess up the batter's timing and mess up the batter's space. So what am I doing as a hitting coach when I'm, when I am investing all this time studying swing mechanics, swim mechanics, put your elbow in the slot. Get your knee under your shoulder, all right? Um, don't cast your hands. You know, don't fly your shoulder up. And you're, hey, you're chicken winging. All, I mean, you're bending too much at the waist. You're, all these things, right? But I have, I'm not talking about timing. But as a hitter, when I played, guess what, Jeff? Guess what I did in the batter's box? All I, all I thought about was the ball. I didn't think one iota about my hips, shoulders, anything else. I thought about the ball. But stop there, right? Well, don't stop there. Keep, keep unfolding it. What about the ball did I think about? And that's what opens up the, the, the folder that's, that's marked timing. That's what opens up the folder that's marked, that's marked spatial alertness or spatial acuity or sensitive to space. You know what I mean? So and that's where, I guess, these last you know, uh, 15 or you know, years I've been, been teaching, I've been dedicating myself to study that aspect of hitting and that's what my son that's basically that's what my son grew up with yeah yeah no i i i'm with you on that i think uh 
you know the 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 swing the swing uh but when it comes to games uh you got to see the ball and, and you got and and you got to execute however way you do it the, the, whatever you show up with whatever swing you put on doesn't really matter as long as you are hitting the baseball and executing so uh so now so are, so are we talking like are you talking like vision training or what, what can you elaborate more a little bit more on what you're talking about Jeff, it is, it's, it, it's all of that, man. It's deep. You know what I mean? It, it is, it is vision. So initially when I looked at timing, you know, I, I started out with, okay. Um, oh, dancing with the pitcher, you know, and I, 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 I learned this first. At first I learned as I'm watching this, um, uh, the batter needs to get himself in sync. He needs to synchronize his own self, right? Meaning this, that, uh, athletically, when you do things, your hands have got to jive with your feet and your feet with your hands. Your arms have got to work with your legs and your legs have got to work with your hands. And that's with any athletic action, right? So I looked at that part and then I said, okay, well, let's look at the batter dancing with the pitcher. You've heard that before. You know what I mean? And so I looked at that intently and then I said, well, it's, it, it's more than just this. Okay. It, it really runs with... Um, how was the how was the batter getting prepared to in position to make a reaction to the ball, right? And now you got to start calculating the vision, the eyes, because what you're really getting in position is the eyes. And and, and part of me when I when I first was like learning this was uh, I felt you know I I pray I pray and I read the Bible every single day as, as they try to you know. And I, sometimes, Jeff, I'm doing a baseball lesson, work with somebody, and I'm saying, Lord, I don't know what to do here. And as I'm praying, I'm getting, I'm getting wisdom, right? And I felt, I felt inside, right, the Lord told me, David, look at the batter's eyes when you throw batting practice to him. Just watch his eyes. And, you know, and being sensitive to myself as an athlete, I can feel where I am throwing the ball. I know where that ball is. I know where my body, my body position, where my elbow is, my shoulders, my hips are, my legs are, while I'm watching a batter. So I know when this ball is coming out of my hand. And I would watch batter after batter when they really had problems hitting. I would stare <clears throat> at their eyes. But more specifically, I would stare at their dominant eye. And there's people in our industry, Jeff, who are eye specialists, oh, come on, Dave, you don't need to know what dominant eye. Dominant eye really doesn't make any significant difference. Well, and these are from the best people in the industry. Coming from someone who's actually done it and gone into the games, and, and then now I'm training myself, I wanted to know what my dominant eye was because I, I'm paying attention to what the eye's doing. You know what I mean? If you're going to think about your elbow, shoulder, knee, if you can, I think, sort of shrink down what your attention is, your brain's attention is, I'm focused on body part, you're better off for it. So I would, I would watch the batter's dominant eye, and I would, I would observe this, that a lot of times, Jeff, the batter wasn't picking up the ball early enough in the flight path. It was, like, like I, it was hard to explain this to parents and, and, the, and the, to the kids. What do you mean? I said, I'm, I'm throwing the ball to you, and it's looked like you're like a deer in the headlights. Well, what does that mean? Okay, I'm throwing a ball to you, and it's just like your brain, right before I'm letting it go, your brain stops, right? It looks like this. And this is what I use this often. I said, when I'm throwing a ball to you, it looks like you don't even think about this ball, you ready, until you see it. That's what I see. And now it's come, I've come to a place where, you know, players love this. When we're talking timing, talking spatial alertness or spatial awareness, where the ball is going in flight path, I, I said this. Basically, after 28 years, Jeff, I have categorized your hitting problem. It comes down to one of two things. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> either, <laughs> I got my notes. Either you're, either you're getting ambushed by the ball. You're getting ambushed by the ball. And that's what I just told you. I'm throwing the ball. I look at your eyes, and it looks like your brain just stopped for a split second. You don't think about the ball until you see it. Boom, the ball ambushes you. The word ambush means, you know, it comes from out of surprise, right? And then, oh, there it is. And now your body's telling you, hey, hurry up. The ball's almost here. 
You know I mean? And all these, all these hitting falls happen, right? Oh, you're dipping your back shoulder. You're flying open. You're collapsing. Well, because sure, you're desperate. That you're looking at a player who's desperately trying to get the bat down to the zone because he just got ambushed by the ball. Sec- the second point is this. Second biggest hitting mistake, right? And if you look carefully at the eyes, this is only where you, you, you observe this. Hitters get too excited. Hitters get too excited. And, this, and I think this is a, a growing problem in our, our, our bat speed, di- uh, data-driven di- devices culture, right? Hit as hard as you can when they get too excited. So listen here. So the ball gets about five feet from where the point of contact should be, right? You know what happens? They try to, they try to smash the ball as hard as they can. And ra- rather than keeping their mind on the continuing flight path where the point of contact should be, you know what happens? They you know roll, what happens? Yeah, they, they, they miss hit it. They swing and uh, miss. Yeah, yeah, but, but deeper than, deeper than miss hitting it, pop up, ground out, the last five feet, rather than getting the brain to the point of contact, their brain starts to go out to the outfield. It goes to where they want to hit the ball. Now, I can speak truthfully to this because I've experienced it myself. You know what? You know when you like, ever see someone, um, and sometimes a lot of pro levels will do this. They'll have a coach flipping another coach, hitting like, like ground balls to infield or fly balls, but the coach flips it, right? So I was doing this, but I asked the coach, hey, stay behind the L screen and throw him in the ball. And I was trying to hit the ball all over the field, right? And I, and I was trying to hit the ball to third base, shortstop, whatever. I could feel that last five feet, Jeff. My brain got disconnected with the flight path, and I was thinking about hitting the ball to left field, yeah. smashing out there, going over center field. And I, and I know, I, I, hey, that's what's going on. And when you watch someone's eyes, you can see that. Their, their brain's going somewhere else. Yeah. You know? I, I, so, I, so, yeah. so tell me what you said. Go ahead, talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, I, I think I, I think you're right. You know, I, I see the same thing. Guys are not picking up the ball or seeing the ball early enough. And, and, and you're right. You know, they they're not seeing the ball into contact. So the window of which they are seeing the baseball is it, very small. So yeah, man, I, I'm right there with you. You know, I think you I think you're absolutely right. All right. Hey, so listen, hold on, hold on. So let me turn the tables and ask you, okay? Because um, in the last several years, I've had this interview with um, some professional teams, right? And, and I'm, I'm very honored, right. and, um, and it's really cool to go into the environment. And before I get started, anytime, I'll always ask the, the people who are going to sit down with me, what kind of things have you been doing? What kind of things have you been trying? What is your you know, uh, organization you know, focusing on? So, so tell me, Jeff. All right, you got your academy, you got your players, um, and someone says, "Hey, Jeff, man, I'm, my my son loves the game. He's doing well, and he's doing great in the batting cages with you, but it's just not transferring back to the game." Help me. What are you doing? My my approach to helping hitters is working on their uh, their approach first, their vision, and then their their mechanics. So. You have to go up there. You have to have an idea of what you're wanting to do or what you're trying to do. And then you got to understand how to see the ball. And then you got to have a balanced swing that's on time and movement that allow you to hit through the ball. So that, that's kind hold of on, my hold approach. On. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Unfold for me the folder that says approach. Unfold that for me. So you got you got a 12-year-old kid, 14-year-old kid, maybe 16. And, okay, we're going to work on the approach. Describe to me the approach. At the younger level, it keep it simple. You know, we're kind of looking for for the fastball over the plate. But we, you know, we like the idea of the one location, one pitch, one speed concept that I learned from Perry Husband. Okay, that's great. Great question. And I've, I and years ago, I was challenged by Don Slot. Love Don Slot, right? Right, right. View pro played played in Pittsburgh. You know, everywhere else too. But he asked me a question today. So when you teach your hitters when you're hitting, where do you tell your batters to look for the ball? Like what, what pitch do you expect? What zone? Do you, 
you think zone hitting? I mean, what do you do? Right. So uh, I said, you know, I mean, this is like, I don't know, 15 years ago. I mean, you know what? I never really thought about that way. Right. But I, I, I guess, I mean, you told me you were, and, and, and that's why I guess down the middle. Uh, that's what I, I, I would presume this ball is going to come down the middle. He says, no, you think the ball is going to go outside and then adjust in. I said, well, let me think about that. So I go back and I go back to the laboratory and I try some things out and I said, you know what? I don't think that really works for me, right? I mean, everybody's different. But so that's why as a hidden coach, or coach it's our job to figure out the landscape. You know what I mean? They're coming to you. It's not always one way, this way, my way, or that's it, right? So maybe, maybe that worked for Don Slot. So I'm listening to an interview, uh, Bob Costas and uh, who's there? Um, Rod Carew, Rod Carew, I don't know, it may have been Tony Gwynn with him, I forget who it was, but Rod Carew was there. Bob Cost is asking this, uh, Rod Carew a question. And the same thing, where do you think the ball's going to go? Hey, Bob, when I was batting, I just expected the ball to come right down the middle of the plate. Because if it wasn't right down the middle, I can make an adjustment to the outside. I can make an adjustment to the inside high and low. I said, boom, that's exactly what I used to think. Expect this. And then you can split her off. But I mean, how easy is that? So to me, I think when we think about approach, I think in the back of the mind of the hitter, right? When you st- you're stepping in the batter's box, I'm looking at the pitcher. I've already got programmed this pre-designed strike zone that fits. You know what I mean? It should be in this space. Like, we're not playing cricket. It's not going to bounce. I'm going to hit it. We're already programmed, we're wired to understand it. So that's already part of the approach. But so what else is a part of the approach? I mean, I love that, that question. What is your approach? And Jeff, you play baseball, right? You were probably, you were probably pretty good, right? Because you're still doing it. You're, it's in your fabric. It's in your blood. When you got the home plate and you look at the pitcher, what? was going through your mind you know you know for for the longest time I, I don't think i really knew and then i got connected with the coach that talked a lot about about vision so it got to the point where i would focus as hard as i could on the baseball boom how easy is that when you play tennis when you play, play tennis you hit me the ball i hit you the ball when you hit me the ball as a cross-court shot i gotta go my forehand the only thing I think about is what? The ball. It's low. It's high. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I'm at the home plate, man, how, how simple is that? You look at the picture and you say, here's your approach. Here comes my ball. Why should there be anything else? You know, the wide receiver. I got to make this route, catch the ball. Why, is it, 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 does my approach think? I think the only time the approach may change if I got two strikes. You know what? I may try to, I may try to expand myself. A little bit more, you know what I mean, and be, you know, be more tied down. But you know, okay. Next thing, so you got the approach. You're trying to fix this hitter at game time. And then you said, what? What'd you say again? Next thing was what? See, see, see the ball. See the ball. How do you, you know, learn? Learning how to see the ball and, and trying to pick up the ball as early as possible. What we instruct guys to do, what we like to tell them to do, is, you know, we we don't care what you look at. You can look at anything, but when the pitcher starts to rotate, you got to get that eyes on time to that release window. Good. How do you feel about that? You believe that? I do. Okay. All right. This is good. This is a really good question. All right. And and I, I was thinking about this before we got on the air. Yeah. So, uh, I had a debate. And I knew this for a long time. Um, I think we're about the same age. You played ball in about the eighties and nineties, right? Nah, nah, man. I'm I'm a little bit younger. I'm I'm thirty six. Oh, God bless your heart. So <laughs> at least when I played, and maybe some of the audience, when 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 we played, they say, "Okay, listen, fellas, when you see the pitcher's arm, if it's a fast, a fat wrist, that's a fastball. If it's a skinny wrist." It's going to be a curveball. Did anybody ever tell you that before? I, I have. I have heard that. Yep. All right. Did you ever see that? No. 
Okay, okay, so listen. Neither did I. And I'm looking down the bench when the coach is trying to see the ball, the wrist, whatever, see the ball out of his hand. I'm thinking, am I the only one who cannot see the ball out of the hand? Is anybody else saying the same thing? Right? So I got into this debate, all right? And so I believe, but with some things I heard you say before, that you're on the side of the, of the bench that says, hey, we see the ball out of the pitcher's hand, right? Right. Okay, good. Well, so yeah. can you, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me. Talk to me. Yeah, you know, I have guys that, that recognize cues really well from, you know, what the pitch is coming, you know. I mean, there are guys that can see spin, something see color, but, you know, with our guys, we make it, we, we stress and make it a priority to see the ball. So, so they see the ball and, and they're able to recognize. Yeah. So, um, along in the mid-2000s, Fox Sports Science came out and they did some testing and they maybe they had their, their version of, of pupil X, and they told us this: batters do not see the ball out of the pitcher's hand. It may be somewhere between five, six, seven, eight feet further from the pitcher's hand where you actually see you pick up the ball, the flight path of the ball. And when I talk to other, when I talk to major league players, I talk to major league managers who played, right? So they. I, I never, I never saw the ball in the hand. I don't know why people even talk about that. I mean, so many people say the same thing. So I think it's important because this, there is, there is timing to the vision. And what's also important is if you're timing your location, then if you're on the side of the fence where you don't see it out of the hand, well, where do you pick up the ball? Then there's timing to transitioning your eyes in a depth perception and that's what i see i can physically see it don't ask me how i'm looking at someone's dominant eye and i can see them like a, like a camera that focuses out on a subject it zooms out and it zooms in i can see that eye not picking up depth of the ball where you know you should pick it up you know, if it's five, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten feet, it depends on the velocity. So that's the side of the fence I'm on, and that's what I've been teaching players how to accurately not only get your eye in position, but understand well, what depth am I picking this ball up? And that's that's like a whole chapter. Of, so it's I think it's one of the biggest attributes to uh, hitters, or like elite hitters, have that, and I think some. Player, players just born that wiring to understand, pick up depth of the ball and and find the information you're trying to pick up from the ball. You're trying to find the information that's like speed and the space of the ball. And then basically I'm just making a reaction to speed and space. You agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking and I'm processing. Um, hey, Jeff, you know what? So, so, so anyway, oh, hold but, on. This may be a little plug, but I, I, I would recommend to the audience and and there you already got some of this stuff, but the 5.0 version of the best hitting drill ever, I explain this to the audience. And and then I explain to the audience how to teach this. You follow me? So when players come back, well, I just not doing it in the game. I do it with you because you're just giving me a little soft serve ice cream of uh, you know feeds and I'm doing it off the batting tee, but when someone stands out there at at full range speed, hey, well now we can apply the principles. You know you can you know what? I used to not players or teams just always soft toss, right? Never throw overhand. But I've learned through the years, hey, if you just take, you take these principles, you take these concepts, you can make this work with a soft toss. Because I'm training you to be sensitive to the, the, the speed and space of the ball from any drill. And, it's, and, and it ties back in. All you care about is flight path and reading flight path and you know pitch recognition that's another great topic you know the deeper side of pitch recognition is not just like oh that's a fastball or that's a curveball the deeper side is the depth of it where is its last location you know what i mean right so, so what about the uh the thing that like the the overthinking that that whole part of the game where you know you could tell a guy you could tell he's overthinking uh, what what the yeah. conversation? What's the conversation there? Because that's gonna, if you're thinking, then you're not seeing. Great point. Um, I just did a little video about this, but here, let, let me ask you something. All right, 
if the coach says that maybe I, I probably said this early in my coaching career, maybe you have too. Hey, Billy, John, Tommy, go up to the home plate. Don't think. <laughs> don't think. <laughs> Just see it and hit it. Yeah. Right? Right. This is my response. This is my response now. Oh, I said, I told players, when your coach tells you to go to home plate, not to think, turn around and coach, say, coach, can you clarify that? Do you mean you want me to go to home plate and not focus? Do you mean you want me to go to home plate and not concentrate? Because I can't focus and I can't concentrate unless, unless I'm thinking, right? Okay, so now we can have a, we can have a conversation. Well, what am I focusing on? What am I concentrating on? I mean, if I just go to home plate and don't think, you must put a blindfold on my face and just tell me when to swing. And I'd still be, and I'd still be thinking because I'm waiting for you to tell me when to swing. You know what? I mean, seriously. We have to think, but let's open the folder up and let's say, let's, let's analyze this. Let's study this and, and get a laboratory. What are we thinking about? And that's where I believe the wiring here. Let me, I, I shared this. I was just in Wisconsin doing a, um, an event and I, I, I'm very blessed. I love this. I love going around the country. I got a one rate fee. Now I go anywhere in the country for one rate and it's, it's, it's very affordable and uh, I work with players. I work with hitters. So I'm just in Wisconsin this past weekend, and um, I'm asking the players uh, a question ab- about. Well, I lost all my train of thought about um, this, this about thinking, wiring. I couldn't explain to you for the longest time why players say, "I just go to home play. I don't think. It just happens." I couldn't put my, my mind around it until I kept getting in the laboratory and trying to understand my son. My son's a lefty hitter. I'm a righty hitter, right? My son does everything lefty, 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 and he does a lot of things natural. And so here, here, here's, what, here's what happened to me. When I was growing up, I'm a righty hitter, okay? And I go to the, to the field, man. They weren't like into a facilities ride when I was growing up. Just go to the field, get your batting tee, toss the ball by your hand. Maybe someone will come by for your batting practice, whatever. So to, to pass the time, I started batting left-handed, right? And learning, you know, I said, I'm going pretty good with this. It's pretty natural. And I had somebody throw me batting practice. I'm thinking, seems pretty easy on the side, right? I see the ball better batting left-handed then I do batting right-handed. It actually, it actually appears that when I, like when I go inside, the room seems brighter when I'm standing in the lefty batter's box, righty batter's box. When I bat lefty, Jeff, the things that I'm teaching and talking about timing, spatial awareness, and alertness, guess what? Ready? It just happens. It just happens. I don't like, now I understand my son when he say, pop, I hey, pop. Why are you teaching me this? I'm already doing this. Well, you know, you got to consider this and that. And you get, when I would go in and do it lefty, I understood him better. And that's where, like, you know what? Now I understand when someone says, I don't need to think. When I bet left-handed, I don't need to think at all. All the spatial awareness, it's just, it just happening. You know what I mean? And all that stuff, you know, the face wins the race, boom, it just, it just goes. But about righty, I got to program myself to do that. So you know what's, you know what's intriguing about this? You ready? Jeff, when someone comes to work with me, right, you know, you know, you've got this system, you got to go back and watch some of his videos because I talk about a particular position when you get to the finish line, a point of contact. You know, there's a starting line, there's a finish line, right? So there's a particular, there's a particular positioning of the face when the, 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 the hitter gets to the point of contact, right? And when you understand that, you, when somebody first comes into you and they're having problems hitting, Right, maybe you spend the first five minutes. Or I'm a righty hitter. Try this out. Hey, do me a favor. Bat left-handed for me. I want to look at something. And you know what? I'm surprised at that. Sometimes they actually they never bat lefty, and I'm, I never did it before. They actually bat better left than they do righty. And as I walk down, I said, I'll say to you, they're 15 years old. I said, what did you what did you realize? What did you observe? And Coach Dave, I, I was batting better bat lefty than righty. Why do you think? I don't know. I just, I was just seeing a ball better. 
And I, and I go back to my own experience. I said, you know what, Jeff, if someone would have told me, Dave, I want, you need to be a lefty batter. You're more natural. You're seeing it better. Stick with lefty. I wish somebody would have told me that at 15. I mean, I did, I did good. You know, but that was, it was just so natural for me. I didn't have to think. And I think every coach listening to this should try that out. When they got someone difficult when they first come in, you know what I mean? You know, try it out. Bat lefty or bat, go bat righty. But you, but you got to understand the positioning because then you could, you could tell I'm probably within like 10 pitches. Hey, this is going to work. It's not going to work. You know, I mean, you're in a laboratory, so you know we're just going to sample it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've tried that before, but not in in that context. So I think I'm going to try to think about that a little bit. Um, what about what about lefty lefty? You know, there's that whole dynamic that you hear about lefty can't hit lefties, and 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 what the, the what, what's going on there? Tell me what you think. I want to hear from you. You what? What's that? I want to hear from you. <laughs> All right, listen. I, listen, I got a whole, I got a whole, a lot of uh, uh, um, theories on that. Um, well, I mean, look, I look at my son. My son had no problem hitting lefties. I mean, um, he was blessed one year. When he won Player of the Year, minor league, rookie of the, uh, minor league Player of the Year 2018. His batting average was like even from lefties to righties. You know what I mean? Um, but. Here's what I want to ask you. Uh, my observation was this. How about these guys? The guys who play third base, the guys who play shortstop, they're, they're right-handed throwers, and they bat lefty. A guy throws righty, and they bat lefty. You ready? My observation is just watching major league games, sitting in my couch watching games, and, and the pitching community um, – I'm kind of uh, 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 re- 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 reacting differently about this. They don't pitch inside very much anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, even even in Major League Baseball, I could tell you a story in a moment here. So when I would watch these guys um, get pitched inside, a guy would throw righty, but bat lefty. When they got pitched inside, they had problems. I mean, I'm talking about the number three and four hitters, right? Oh, pitch those guys away. Pitch those guys away. Guess what? I've learned in this deeper studies and in my own research that, you know what, you, you should have stuck inside because he can't, he doesn't see that pitch. His brain's wiring is not well off with that space. You follow me? And, and you know what, I think I'm not sure if MLB.com stopped doing this, but I would go to MLB.com and look at the velocity charts on like hitters, Right. And I just did something on his Twitter. I didn't tell anybody who it was, but it was uh, Anthony Rizzo. And his ball is a lefty batter. His ball exit speed on his bat was 83 miles an hour on inside pitches. Ball exit speed on his outside corner was 93. Right down the middle was 95 on average, right? So as a pitcher, a pitching coach, why would you let off, why would you even think about not Bearing the guy all inside pitches when his his bat speed is only 83 miles an hour there. Why would you go anywhere else? You know what I mean? So, what do you think? Tell me now. Tell me what you think about lefty lefty matchups. What are you gonna say? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I think about it a lot. You know, I, I'm not a lefty, but I think it, it, it may be just a, a matter of, of repetition. You know, seeing enough balls going away from you. You know, I see right handers struggle uh, against lefty too because. They don't have a lot of rep of ball coming in on them, so so I don't know. So you're about right-handed, right? Yeah, I'm a righty. All right, what's your dominant eye? Um, let me. I'll oh, forget that. <laughs> How about this? It can be How about this? Here's a question. My left eye. Go ahead. Good. Left, left eye dominant. Yep. Okay. All right. Here, here's a question, <clears throat> Jeff. The count is three and two. And it's a big game, all right? Winning runs on second base, whatever. And if you know the pitcher is going to give you a fastball, right? He's not going to put the fastball down the middle of the plate. Would you rather have that fastball pitched inside on the black or outside on the black? Three and two count. Where do you want it? Outside. Yeah. 
So based upon what you told me on that, that formula, being a righty batter, being left eye dominant, that is where I, I would think the majority, most players want it in that, in that, in that model outside corner. Right. But I know maybe you wouldn't want it inside is because you just don't see that pitch as well. You, and your body doesn't have, the wiring's not there. You know what I mean? And that's something that in the first hitting community, we need to pick up on, uh, well, you know what? We always work on the strength, but we work on the weaknesses too. You know what I mean? But, but so, but why don't you want it on the inside corner? What's the answer? Because you see a ball better middle way. And that's my whole point. Like with, with hitters, right? You know, if, if you've got some pitching coaches, listen to this. Listen, I studied pitching. I mean, how can you, how can you not be a, a good hitting coach if you don't study pitching, right? And so you study pitchers, you study the tendencies, but then you, you study pitchers' deliveries, okay? And that's, this is an interesting topic is here in itself is that is I've learned when I, when I work with timing, Jeff, that I've learned to first categorize the hitter's model. I got like, I've categorized hitters in 11 different models, right? And then I categorize hitters in two different tempos, right? What's a tempo? Either medium or slow or, or, or medium or fast tempo. You know what I mean? And then I, I calculate the dominant eye. I calculate, okay, how am I watching a pitcher? In my interviews, I've, I've got only eight answers. How you're looking at the pitcher is very important because it all spins back to your timing. You follow me? And behind how you watch the pictures, understanding a common denominator because it all fits together, right? So you mesh this together. Now the picture, right? How are we going to manage to model the picture? Okay. My son's 15 years old, Jeff. He's in a scouting event and it's, we're in Baltimore and uh, he didn't have a good day, right? And I'm recording. I'm not coaching his team. I'm up in the stands. I'm recording. I always made a point to record the batter and the pitcher. Because I knew that's part of the composition. That's how you look at timing. I'm glad I did this because early in my studies. So went back, looked at it, think, what's what was different? I looked at the picture and I said, you know what? There it is. That's why he was got screwed up today. He was facing a pitcher whose pitching model was like a Clayton Kershaw. There was a pause. There was a a hitch. There was a a delay in his delivery. You follow me? And because of that delay, it my son didn't have enough experiences with this composition of a pitcher to, okay, this is how I respond to this guy. This is what I got to do now. You know what I mean? So I always tell parents and players, and that goes, that's like the debate of mechanics. Well, you, you want to put a square and a batter in a square and look at just him alone. And you never even take an account of the ball and you don't even take an account of the pitcher he's reacting to. How can you look at him and not have the picture in the same, I guess, viewfinder? Like, ah, uh, you're reacting. So I understand the pitch models is so, imp- and here, like, like people send me some clips. Look at my son. What do you think? Well, I can't see the picture. I, I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to get the, the batter's tempo. What tempo is he working out of? Because the tempo affects their vision. I'll tell you a size for in a second, but so I don't know if he's full wind up, the lefty righty, is he from a slide step? You know what I mean? The guy yeah. from the slide step, every is going to affect everybody's tempo. You right. know what I mean? Right. So what about a guy who you know? Let's let's say you got a no stride guy and you got a a guy with a toe tap and a guy with a leg kick. What the what what's the conversation there? Um. Well, it goes back to everything else. When you want to you want to get a portfolio of a player. This is this, this when I get a portfolio of a player. Every time someone comes to me, I got these basic conversation um, interview questions. What do you bat, lefty or righty? Um, what do you throw, lefty or righty? What hand do you write with? Huh? What hand do you write with? Yeah. Why is it important to know that, Jeff? Yeah, no, it's important. Well, I'll tell you why. All right, here. When people are cross dominant, like um, someone named Barry Bonds would throw lefty, bat lefty, but he writes with his right hand. Um, Babe Ruth threw lefty, bat lefty, wrote with his right hand. Brooks Robinson threw righty, batted righty, wrote with his left hand. Those people 
their, their brain is, is, is exercised more in a different dynamic way than other people. They, they know how to use both sides of the brain uh, more effectively. So that's an interesting co- thing to ask players that, right? So and sometimes they have a different, and then they ask them, do you have any experience with like playing instruments? Do you play music? Because that tells me that they have experience with training the right brain hemisphere. And the right brain hemisphere is uh, coordinating space. You see how it works? They're more sensitive to space, and sometimes you can use a music method with those players, right? Do you play other sports? Do you have any current injuries? You know what I mean? What position do you play in the field? So that's all part of this question, right? So now I get to the, the model, right? We got a, a toe-tap model, a no-stride model, right? So we got that down. Dominant eye, ask them what the dominant eye is. And then one important thing, the most, one of, more, most important things I, ask, I have to look at is the hitter's tempo. The hitter's tempo. What tempo was he hitting out of? Because I learned that the tempo is really um, uh, working in conjunction with the timing of the vision and off the pitcher. So I got to find his tempo. What, what's tempo? Here, you know, here. I just had a conversation <clears throat> with someone else's forum a couple of days ago. Uh, um, and uh, another inter- a guy, um, a pitch recognition specialist, right? Yeah. Great guy. Peter Fatty. P- Peter Fatty. Dr. Yeah. Peter Fatty, right? Yeah. Yep. So it came up in this conversation. I, I was basically just trying to sit back and listen. I try, I try to get some input. I was like, listen, it's a good panel there, really some professional people. And it came up, the heart rate thing came up, right? Well, you know, we want to have a, a calmer heart rate. Right, we want to bring the heart rate down, and and one of the researchers talked about, well, you know, we study the heart rate, and some players are better at 160, 150, 130, but somewhere about 120, 135 was like supposed to be the best. And I said, well, wait a minute. You have someone who's got a slower tempo, like Josh Donaldson, uh, Jose Batista. They're they're slow and easy. They sort of build up with the pitcher, right? How do you explain somebody like Alfonso Soriano? Do you remember him? pumping his back and suddenly, suddenly get ready. Do you think he's calm? No. How do you explain something like Gary Sheffield pumping the back, back and forth, pump, pump, pump. Is their heart rate calm? No. Then look at my own son, my own son's style, right? My son is, is on home plate and he's squeezing the bat over and over again. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. His heart rate is alert. You follow me? Everyone has a different style. So you have to find out what is your tempo. Are you a slow, easy guy? Or are you a sudden guy? How about this? Uh, um, spring training, Derek Jeter. Uh, let's get your toe down earlier, Derek. Do you remember the hitting coach who advised him to do that? Right? Good hitting coach. Uh, but right before spring training ended, Derek Jeter says, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going back to my, what, my own way. Because getting the toe down early for Derek Jeter meant it changed his hitting tempo. It, it just, his wiring wasn't, he, his brain, his, his wiring wasn't um, uh, set for a slower tempo. Derek Jeter, I mean, come on, he was like hyper home plate. He began to hit. That was, he began to hit. So, so looking at the player's tempo is, is really, really important because I understand timing behind it, how, how those pieces, you know, sync up together how to get that eye is so important you know and it, it works in conjunction with the temple mm-hmm. another, another, another thing here another thing about temple yeah um my, my son first season in professional baseball 2016 he was blessed he won appalachian player of the year i go out and see him he's doing good right he's doing really good first month and he's just just smashing it right out of high school right right at the end of the season, you know, sometimes my, I love my son, but we don't all, we get a little friction with one another. You know what I mean? Just sure. like sure. dads and sons. So, <laughs> so yep. I'm, I'm, I didn't have, a, I didn't have a language. And I, that's why I, my company, my, my business language of hitting language. I didn't have the, the right words to describe to him. Uh, the tempo. I didn't use that word, but I told him he started to slide the end of the season. Right. But his tempo had changed. He started to get ready sooner and slower. Guess what? He wasn't picking up the ball. His batting average fell with the last, you know, 10, 15 games. His 
started to slump. He slid a little bit. And, but he still won Appalachian Player of the Year. And he remembered that. And he remembered, hey, and someone else, one person in spring training, when he came, up, he came back, had Tommy John, came back, played 2018. Someone in the system said, hey, you need to start a little slower and earlier. Guess what? I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, here we go again. Right? He was hitting. And he, I said, and, he, and I kept telling him, but he had to, he had to figure it out himself. And he switched, he switched to that faster tempo, and then boom, the lights went on. So it just, it just took off. Yeah. So what, what are some of your, uh, some of your favorite resources? Books, website, people that you follow. What, what, what are some of your favorites? Number one, the Bible. <laughs> I don't want to sound like over religious. But honestly, I, I, I pray and read every day. And you know what? When you, you quiet yourself in the morning and throughout the day and you, you sort of the, you, you think about what you read, you know, I, I, real quick, you know, sometimes people begin to read in the Bible and they read a lot of it. And I, I told my, my son, my daughter, my wife and people around me, sometimes, you know what, Jeff, it's better off just reading one, one or two sentences out of the Bible. You know what I mean? And just, just think about that one sentence throughout the whole day and it, it carries you. It's like, you know what? That's probably better off than reading three or four pages at the end of the night. Like what did I read? You know what I mean? And then I believe the Holy spirit starts to work in your life. I mean, it's in all phases, you know, I told you before, literally I got somebody in front of me. I'm throwing them like, I don't know what to do with this player. I just like, and then boom, it comes. He shows, he, he shows up and, and there's enlightenment. You know what I mean? But I, then the Bible, and then, you know what? I mean, Hey, just like everybody else. Uh, I follow the social media stuff. I mean, the stuff that you're doing is great. You know, everyone else is doing is great. I mean, I, I think the more is, is good and you compare and cross, you know, lines and say, well, this is good. But that's not good. Uh, MLB Network. I mean, that's that's my go-to channel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of us, like, hey, you know, you know and you sort of, you just sort of watch. But I just think um, – my resource is just watching a lot. You know, like you have a facility, I got a facility here. Some of the things that I picked up, like the best hitting drill ever, was because I was walking by the TV set and I would put VH tapes in and just play old baseball games, you know, from I had recorded from the week, week prior. I'm walking by and I see Ricky Henderson hit a home run. I said, what just, what did he just do? He just, boom, it hit me. I said, wait a minute. I saw him on his deceleration. And I said, that looks like something that Cal Ripken does. Troy Gloss does this. I had a player in college do the same thing. So sometimes when you're always watching a game, and not sometimes just like astutely, but just casually, you start picking things up, you know? So those are the, the things that I, I do, you know? And, and I, I got friends I talk to and compare notes with and, but basically, it just comes back to a lot of prayer and just sometimes going home and just praying and talking to the Lord, you know, Jesus about, you know, what, what can I do better? What can I have done better? You know, and he answers you. He speaks to you. Yeah, very cool. So one last question. Um, if you were me interviewing you, what would you have asked that I didn't have? <sighs> just give me a moment about that. Um you know, the, the, the biggest thing that I am studying, I, I'd say this, what is your observations and what do you think will happen after a year in Major League Baseball and trickle down after we had a year of the data-driven de uh, devices? What outcomes do you think we will see? What do you got? Well, that's my question for you. That's my question for you. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> my people. You, you, my I've people. been thinking about. I've been thinking about this. I want you to answer. Come well, on. My my you, people. You my, my my people want to hear from you. I did ask the question. Okay. Well, I think some players will benefit from it. I think there's some players. When they are smashing the ball, they, they will accidentally learn how to pay more attention to the ball. Pay, that's, that's, that's an optimal phrase, pay more attention to the ball. But I think the majority of our hitting culture are thinking more about 
smashing the ball, you know what I mean, out of, into outer space and just get into my mechanics and to hit the ball harder, you need more rotation, you need to coil more, you need to get into more of your scat load, and they get to the game, all of a sudden, psh, air goes out. It's almost like, I thought about this illustration, imagine practicing, you're learning how to drive, and but you have to drive a, a school bus. You're learning how to drive a school bus. And it's going nice and slow and easy, slow turns, and all of a sudden, okay, now the instructor says, okay, let's go and do this on the road, real road, but he puts you in a Formula One car with other cars, and you got to go fast, slow, stop and go. It's much faster. The dynamics change, you know what I mean? And then sometimes I think with how we drill players that um, we don't really match up what's really going on in the game. It doesn't transfer, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I think, so again, it will benefit some players. Yeah. But the majority, I think they're, they're going to be lost. Like, this isn't, this isn't clicking together for me. The piece, it's almost like I had a Division One coach contact me by doing some work, and he's going to say, Dave, I just got one player. It's not, it's not putting together. There are some pieces missing. And what are those pieces? Yeah. It's not, you, those pieces aren't measured, I believe, on data driven right. devices. Right. No, I agree. I think I think we've gone uh, or going uh, just a little too far. Um, it, there's got to there's got to be some balance. I mean, there's like a, like you said, there's some use to it. There's some some guys benefit from it, but we, I think we the the pendulum's going too far, and it's going to come back around hopefully and be be back in the middle, and we'll figure <laughs> figure out how to hit again. Good. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you doing what you're doing. Keep up the good work. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And, um, you know, keep studying, and I'm going to keep following you and, and keep learning from you and everyone else that comes on these programs. But um, blessings on what you're doing, and um, keep doing a good job. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. All right. You're the man, Joe. Thank you. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right, bye.